These little presentations are very, very short. The purpose of them is to get you stimulated to think about what you want to do, yeah, and then utilize the, the brains of other people in the group and to see if there is anything that you aren't doing well or that you could improve upon uh, when it comes to uh, your life. Uh, and so what we're going to discuss today is what I wrote as the top seven decisions about work. And it's interactive, which means that you guys can talk uh, and you ask questions or you can, you know, or you can argue. You know? I like arguing. You know? The interesting thing about arguing is, is that if I say something that you disagree with and you uh, tell me how you feel about it or what you think is better, I get the opportunity to learn something too. I disagree with you. I, 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 I think you're wrong. <laughs> so here we go. Anyhow, yeah. question number one out of the top seven uh, decisions to make about work is yeah, know what to do. Now, which way do I want to work or what do I want to do? Yeah, what are, yeah, you got to start from where you are. The first question is, is Should you be doing things that you've been doing all along? Or should you be striking out on a path that's new? And some of us got made redundant because we don't like the word redundant or made redundant or anything these days. We've been free. set free. But that, that aside, uh, the issue is, is that we were all we were all promised three day work weeks. Yeah. And this was this was back in the eighties and nineties. We were promised a three day work week. And I don't know whatever happened. And then I realized what happened to the three-day work week is we're actually on. Yeah. Just some people are doing the three days, and some people aren't doing any day at all, and some people are doing 12 days, you know. Yeah. The problem is, is that a lot of people who are doing six days a week, yeah, yeah for the people who are doing that. And they, they understood, you know, 20, 30 years ago that we were going to have enough work to keep people busy, you know, the whole population busy for three days a week. Yeah. And that was the one thing that was that never caught on to the fact that uh, you know, some of us would be in, in the, the work for the six days and some of us would be out. So maybe you know, what to do, you know, uh, doing something different might be the first question to ask. The second question is, yeah, right. oh that's question number two. Yeah. This is the one that most people have a problem with. And I was probably 45 before I figured it out, and that I was unemployable. Although I have gotten several jobs even since then, and um, most of the time I do realize that I'm unemployable. And no one wants to hire me. Anybody who was foolish enough to want to hire me, yeah, I wouldn't work for. You know? it's like, well, I, uh, so you need to look at, you know, do you need to find a, a, a buyer? Yeah, if you're going to be the employer, because what you need to do is you still need a client. And whether or not you're selling yourself as a business or whether you're selling yourself as an employee, you got to find somebody who's going to buy you, and your skill sets must match that. The wonderful thing about selling yourself as an employer, and yeah, selling yourself as the boss, the, the, yeah, the business of your own, is that you can market yourself in your own unique manner, rather than responding and to their request for a position. There are those people who actually get jobs in Ireland through networking, through actually marketing themselves, and through positioning themselves in a position like a business and to be hired like a business gets hired. And, and, but you have to actually market yourself that way. You need to build a website rather than a CV. Yeah. Sending out a CV to someone uh, if you're looking to market yourself as an individual these days just doesn't work. Yeah. It, well, it will work if you've got the if you're in the right sort of place. You got to have exactly the skills, uh, attributes that they're looking for. But if you want to if you want to get found these days, and you've got to have keywords. You gotta have keywords. I don't think you know it's a strange. I used to have skills and attributes, and now I have yeah, keywords. Have to this if, you, if you build yourself a, a nice set of keywords, just to try and take yeah, on well, one point, uh, but there's seven to make. Yeah, the point I make is that they're sole traders in the middle there. 
Yeah, so that's a three-way choice. No, there's, there's a fourth. Fourth. Oh. Yeah, there, there's four things. Yeah. 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 yeah, do you work as an employer? Do you work as an employee? Yeah. Yeah. Do you work as a sole trader? A sole trader meaning that you were never going to employ anyone else. Yeah, you will always be working by yourself. And basically what you become then is, is, is a, a type of, it's, it's in between being goal, yeah. an employer and an employee. Yeah. And then there's the alternative, there's the fourth one, which is, is not to work at all. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Because that is also a choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the thing is, is that most of us are actually thinking about you know, being in one of those positions. See, the, the advantage, the disadvantage to the employee situ situation is, um, is that you, you do really have, you're at the, the total, uh, you're totally at the mercy of the employer. As a self-employed person, you're almost totally at the mercy of the employer. <coughs> as, as, a, yes, as, as an employer, yeah, you're almost totally at the mercy of your employees and your employers. <laughs> yeah. So it's like that. It, it was a decision, and it's a decision they have to make. It's a decision they have to think through very clearly and decide what you want to do. Because it makes no sense to jump into another job when in fact you should be jumping into and a, a different seat altogether. You have to think it out. This is the one that has me going on for a number of my friends at the moment. Those of us who are looking at and engaging in an activity that is very similar to work for other people. And because if you help other people out, you may be helping yourself. But uh, is there a living in it? What's my investment and what's my return? And that's the question they always ask in business. What's my investment? What's my return? The yeah, return on investment is how a business is valued. And so you look at people who are setting up businesses and they go to venture capitalists, they go to angel funders, they go to the bank. And everybody wants to know what's your return on investment? Before you start working for yourself or working for someone else, you got to think about all the investments that you have to make, and you got to think about the return on investment. You know, is it a long-term investment, or are you actually doing something that's very short-term? That's four that we're on to. Well, your route to market. If you're thinking about and going to work. Yeah. The, the idea that your route to market is, is about you know, getting yourself out in front of the right people to make the right decisions. You know, whether or not you're going to be an employee yeah, side of it, you know, looking for to get your CVs out there. How many of you guys are looking for work? How many of you are actually looking for a job? Let me ask that question first. You know, an to be an employee. And everybody else is looking to be an employer. Okay. And that's the other thing that's not up there because that one isn't a decision. That's the one I'm looking for. Yeah. It isn't a decision. Yeah. Yeah. If you're looking for employment, you need to look for employment. And if you're looking for uh, to start a business, you need to be looking to start a business. And if you're looking to see what happens, yeah, it, hmm? you, you, you will be stuck for a longer while. Yeah, because of the fact that you're going to have two things happen to you one day, and they happen to you relatively quickly. Somebody's going to offer you a job and somebody's going to offer you a contract on the same day. Yeah. It, it may take three years for it to happen. Yeah, but it does happen. Uh, yeah. Number five. There you go. Oh, the, the it's just going to go as fast as it can. Yeah. How do well do you fare against the competition? Yeah, and that's a, a wonderful decision you have to make is that when it comes down to deciding what to do, yeah, 
is you need, you need to decide what before you land it. Um, it's sort of like the, the area here is like, yeah, I've been a skills trainer for 25 years, yeah? coaching businesses and managers. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, about 20 years ago, coaching started becoming popular, and now all of a sudden everybody is a coach and a trainer, and, you know, and it's like, so it means that there's a lot of competition. Yeah, if they're against the competition, then what's, what's number five? Number six is... Know when and where to be unique. What's your unique selling point? What's your, what makes you special? What makes you stand out? Oh yeah. Is that a good thing? Funny thing is, is the stuff that makes you stand out brings you outside of the norm. And a lot of us are actually being uh, discriminated against for being outside of the norm. So do you want to be uh, putting in those Keywords again that are attracting people to see you as something that is not of the norm, and when you're looking to be employed as the norm, yeah. Yeah. it's a bit madness, but that's what seems to be happening to a lot of people. When I take a look at what goes on with them, is that a number of people actually are just marketing themselves to the wrong market. Yeah. They haven't decided which place they want to be. To so back up to number one, they haven't decided. You know, whether or not, yeah, right. first of the number two, you know, to be an employee and an employer, yeah, if, you're, if your CV looks like an employer, you're certainly never going to be an employee. I thought it was very interesting. Would you ever hire somebody who is more skilled at your job than you are? If you were the sole yes. boss, <laughs> if, you're for the if you weren't look worried about losing your job, yeah, I would. It was my company, and then I'd step higher. But it's the way you say your job. I've been doing that for a good long time where I was working because I was a senior engineer in charge of younger engineers yeah. who were a lot more skilled at doing the work of the team. But on the other hand, I was, my job was managing them. Tom Peters said that what we actually did, and those of us who actually did that, and because some of us did do that, and, and we hired people and we brought them up and we actually trained them to become better at what they did than what we were doing when we did that. Yeah? Which is my uh, intention yeah, whenever I started into a job. And, yeah, we actually climbed up the ladder and then we jumped off at the top. Yeah. He said that we rose to our own level of incompetency in life. Yeah. Uh, we got to the point that, that we were no longer as valuable as the person behind us was, and that person behind us filled the position. Yeah. Now see, the thing is, that's actually a good place to be if you're the employer. Yeah, I was looking for people who could do all of the things in the middle. Yeah. Interestingly enough, uh, some people were quite bright and we got cut very quickly. And the only difference was is I actually told them they got cut because of the fact that they were quite bright and stood out. And where most people won't ever tell you what actually happened. And I told them that the reason why they didn't get the job was because they didn't meet the job spec. By the way, and most of the times you go into a job and you don't get the job, it's usually because you don't meet the job spec. Don't go off beating yourself up because something you think you did in an interview. Yes. Okay. And you're just overqualified. So, yeah. or, or yeah, you, just, you don't intersect with yeah. somebody else. Yeah. Well, you can be overqualified. And going back to something you were saying earlier, if you know too much, um, you may get bored with your job, and so therefore you may only be a short term employee. Yeah. And it's awesome. the, the next thing is, three months down the road, you've uh, I'm fed up with this, and they're looking for somebody else. So, you know, if, if you know too much. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm often far more wary of the people who um, who looks too easy to. If the job looks too easy for them, you know, what happens to you if you get a job that's easy for you? Yeah? Yeah, anybody ever been unchallenged before in work? 
Oh yeah. <laughs> and so there's that. That. Okay. And finally, we got look, number seven. Yeah. Know yourself and what fits. Yeah. And decision number seven yeah, is to decide whether or not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the things that you're looking for are actually the things that you're actually going to get motivated by. Now, are you going to get charged up by what it is that you're looking for? Is it going to actually do you? Because a lot of people I've actually seen who have gotten desperate and are trying to get anything. You know, the only problem with getting something that you, you know, that's just going to put food on the table is the human spirit needs feeding too. And if it's not being fed, this what's going to happen is that it will be short You need to think about that. Good. That half an hour, right? It was, it was, it was right. Yeah. But the, the purpose of this is to get you to think. Yeah. If, if you are thinking, and then, then maybe uh, things will happen. In the meantime, you know. I'm going to sit down now and shut up. <laughs>